Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and I'm recording this video for my survey techs, Elena and Michaela. They're going to help me cut some cross sections on a canal for a survey we did for a local irrigation district. So I'm going to show them how to do that in Carlson, Carlson survey. So we want something that looks like this. This is the finis finished section with the grid, and then uh, we've got the actual cross section here of the ground surface with a little bit of hatching we have put some uh, multi-liters on some key features and then we've got the elevations across the top here okay and I've got most of this set up in Carlson survey uh, but there is some cleanup that needs to be done uh, so there's about 10 or 15 minutes of cleanup on each section so uh, what I want to show you is how to do this now we we don't have the um, civil module for Carlson so we're actually using the profile tool uh, which is under surface so we're gonna use this tool here quick profile to draw these grids and uh, we've got the alignment in here with the 3d poly lines that we're gonna use okay so let me give you an example here um, and we'll just we'll go ahead and label this section right here you can see I've, I've labeled the station offset of the start point Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to come up to surface and we're going to go quick profile. We're going to use the default here of 3D polyline. Okay, and we're going to hit OK. And then it's going to pull up a rather, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we, we select the polyline. Okay, and then it's going to pull up a rather complicated um, dialogue here. This is the easy one. Uh, so we're going to do a vertical exaggeration of one. Okay, and then we're going to hit this button right here called draw. Okay, this is where the complicated dialog box comes up. Now, the good news is there's a lot here, but the good news is uh, we've already set these, we've already configured these settings for my shop. So we're going to go to load settings, and then in our Carlson survey folder is this uh, quick profile section configuration file. We're just going to open that. Okay, and we're going to get most of what we need now with this. I think there was one thing wrong. Let me check here on the layers. Uh, this is not the layer we want the profile on. We want it to be on uh, line, survey topo lines cross section. So we'll set that. And then we'll just save that so you don't have to do that again. Okay. And then we're going to hit OK. And it's going to give us this dialog box here. It wants to know kind of how to make the grid fit the pro actual profile. We can just accept the defaults. We'll hit OK. And so we're going to get this grid here. I'm going to just drop it over here. It's going to ask us for an alignment file. We're just going to cancel that. We don't need it. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our profile here. Now, it, uh, it doesn't look like this. So that's there's some cleanup to do here. So I'm going to walk you through uh, how we're going to do that. Okay, so the very first part of that, the first step, is we want to figure out where our alignment is on this profile. Okay, and that's where this offset comes in. So I know on this profile that I am 154 feet left of the alignment. Okay, so and you can see the alignment's not perfectly centered. It, it hugs this side just a little bit. So we're going to go, uh, it's 154.36 feet. So we're going to come over here. And it'll draw this tick here. will be drawn at the start of the alignment. So we're going to just draw a circle. And we're going to go 154.36 feet. And that's going to tell me where the alignment crosses the profile. So the alignment crosses the profile right here. So I'm going to draw a line from the intersection of the circle on that grid. And I'm just going to draw... I'm going to turn on my ortho for a little bit. Draw straight up. Okay, so this is where the alignment is on the profile, on the section. Okay, we drew it with the profile tool, but it, it's actually a cross section. Okay, now, what <clears throat> you'll notice that our ticks now don't line up. We want this middle tick to be centered on the alignment. So we're just going to come in and delete all these little ticks. Okay. And then what we're going to do 
is we're going to come up here. We have what we need to copy down to make this uh, look a little more like our profile. So I'm going to just copy this whole thing here. Okay, and part of what we're copying is the, the, the little ticks for the grid and the left or right labels. Okay, and we're just going to copy right here from the middle of this circle, center of that circle. Okay, and we're going to take that and we're going to drop it onto the end of this line that we drew where our alignment is on our cross section. Okay, once that's done, we can delete this circle. Okay, now my, uh, my ticks and my left or right of the alignment is uh, set up properly with the right numbers and it's centered on the alignment. You can come in and get, get rid of this line now. Okay. And um, so it, we're, we're part way there. Okay, so that's the first thing is just to get these labels centered on the alignment. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we don't, we've, we've got these um, vertical bars on the edge of our uh, cross section grid are way too far apart. And we actually, the client doesn't need this much of the profile. So we're going to come in and we're going to trim the profile out. Okay, we just, we've got way more here in our data set than they need. So we're going to shorten this up. I'm going to just come out here kind of past where the, the grade changes stop. And I'm going to uh, trim that out and then get rid of these. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. We don't have as much to trim out here, but there's a little bit. So we're going to just trim this out, okay? because the, the client is primarily worried about what's going on right here. So we don't need all this adjacent ground. Okay, once that's done, now we can snug up these grid, these uh, vertical bars on our grid. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to just move it from here. And you know, we'll leave a little bit of space, but we don't need too much. So I'm going to drop it right there. Okay, and then we can uh, come in here and use this line to trim. Okay, and then once that's done, we want to go in and delete these labels we don't need anymore. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Okay, now on this side, we're actually going to move it from right here on this little tick. Because this side has some extra labels. Okay. And uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll trim this out. Okay. And then this is an extra label. We don't need that. Okay, now for some reason... And you know what? I didn't move that in far enough, guys. Sorry. This can come in. We're going to move it. Uh, we're going to move it. Yeah, I'm going to move it to right here, I think. All right. Okay. And I lost some of my ticks there, didn't I? move those back over okay and then we can delete these extra labels again that we are not using okay so now our grids a little more compact okay for some reason my top line didn't copy down um, I didn't grab my top line so let's get that I'm gonna turn off my ortho now Okay, so we'll drop this in here like that. <clears throat> come out, come over here and trim it out. Okay, so we basically got our grid set up the way we want. Okay, so the, the uh, next step is uh, <clears throat> we want to get our water surface set. So we're going to come in here. Um, this is a, a getting, this line right here is actually getting picked up on the water surface from the LiDAR and it's not super reliable. So we are just going to approximate that water surface. So I'm just going to get it close here. And this water surface changes quite a bit. Um, it changes quite a bit day to day based on the amount of water in the canal. <clears throat> now, I, I am going to put it at, we're going to lower it a little bit. This side's a little lower. So we want it just below where we stop the profile, stop the section. Okay, and then we want to um, grab this label up here, uh, and we're just going to label the water surface. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have it down there. We'll steal it down here. 
So this is actually set up as two pieces of text to be centered on the alignment that runs through the cross section. Okay. So I'm going to put it there for now. And then we actually, this is set up at a 1 to 10, and I think we want a 1 foot offset of our water surface line. Goof that up. So hang on, let me fix that. Let's try this again. So we're going to go from the midpoint there to this intersection. And then we can delete that line. Okay, so now our, our label's centered on the alignment. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and run this up to the top of the grid. Okay, so we've got the water surface in there. <clears throat> Okay, the next thing is we want to just adjust these labels. Uh, now these just happen to, to turn out uh, pretty close, but we want to note the top of berm and the top of concrete liner. Okay, so this is actually the top of the liner. Okay, land side hinge, adjacent ground. Uh, I'll probably throw, if we've got a discernible land side toe, I'll throw that on. Um, and I think we do. Uh, I'm going to call this, oop. I'm going to call this the land side toe. So we'll come and adjust that here in a minute. Okay, so this is the top aligner. Okay, you can see I've got the toe labeled here. Now, I have some uh, text alignment lines for that. Um, so let's go in and turn that on. So it's under. Oh, uh, where's it at? Survey topo lines cross section text align. If you turn that on, okay, and then we've got these lines we can copy up, and they're just to keep the labels uh, aligned with one another so they're not kind of randomly aligned. We can just copy those up. Okay, so I'm going to add a label here for the land side toe, which means this needs to get pulled down. So I just want to make sure it pulls down to a to one of the lines. And then we can copy this. And pull this up to one of the lines. And then we're just going to call this land side toe. Okay. Oops. Okay, so there's a couple more things we want to do now. I'm going to just turn off that layer. <clears throat> so uh, we want to, this line's going to plot thick, and so we want to pull these leader arrows off the line a little bit. So uh, we're going to do an offset, uh, one foot offset of the profile, so we can just pull those arrows out. Okay, because otherwise the tip of the arrow is going to be buried in the in the thickness of the actual cross section line. Okay, so we're just going to pull that out a little bit, and I'm just kind of pulling it down to this line so that it still points at the right spot, but with a little bit of a buffer. Okay, and then, um, okay, now we can leave those lines in because after we get the, the leaders pulled away, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the hatching. That's the last thing we have to do. So we want to just hatch the ground surface on the, uh, on the section. So to do that, hatching, uh, what we need to do is we need to cap the ends of the actual section. So we're going to come in here and we're going to cap this. And let's see. Do the 
same thing over here. Okay, now we also want to hatch the liner in it with a different hatch. So we're going to go ahead and cap off where we think that liner is. It's actually right here. Okay, and then we'll run our hatch command. And we'll go ahead and uh, pick those. We'll do the concrete first. Doesn't like that. Let's try this one. Okay. And then uh, we'll try one of these bigger pieces. Now I've noticed you got to be zoomed all the way out to get this to hatch, right? Okay. All right. Well, let's see if we can get this other side to work. It was having some trouble. All right. Doesn't like something about my gap there about my boundary. <laughs> so let's try this one again. Yeah, it doesn't like something there. I don't think this is it, but I'm going to try a flatten. Alright, so that worked. Okay. So we'll do that one more time. Okay, and then we're just going to match properties on the hatch. So this is the hatch that we're using for the soil. This is the hatch that we're using for the concrete. <clears throat> oh, that's all one piece. I goofed that up, so let's try that again. Uh, we want those to be separate hatches, so we got to run the command twice. All right, so we're almost done. So we'll make this the concrete hatch. And I don't know why this natural hatch didn't turn out. It didn't look like it matched properly. Let's try it again. Yeah, so something's up there. So I'll have to check that out. This might be a BricsCAD versus Carlson thing. So we'll open that BricsCAD and fix it up. So <clears throat> after you get your hatches in, you're going to come in and delete your caps and your offset line because we want it to just look like that when we're done. Same thing over here. Okay. And uh, we also want to put these labels don't go on the right layer. So we want to go ahead and put those on the <clears throat> topo text cross section layer. Okay, and now we've got a finished section, right? That looks like these others. Um, we want to go ahead and add the station. So in this example, that was station 156 plus 44. Okay, so this would be cross section four and 156 plus 44 is the station. Okay, and then uh, we can just save this. Uh, let's open it up in BrickScad real quick and make sure we can get that hatch to work properly.
Okay, so we'll try this again here. All right, now it's just a it was a Carlson bug, so now it's now it looks right. Okay, so uh, now we've got our section laid out. We can save it, and we're ready to do the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate